I now have the honor of introducing George Makoulis. Um, George is a 25-year-old Greek Cypriot. He studied physics in university and then got a master's in sustainable energy, which he's applying as a commercial entrepreneur, um, launching a business that, that looks at solar panels and tries to identify when they are failing um, so that they can be repaired or replaced. But I think he's here today mainly because he's also a social entrepreneur. Um, he has been involved in the launching of two separate youth-led networks, one of which tries to connect entrepreneurs, but the other deals with the unique political circumstances in his country. I don't know how much you know about Cyprus. It's a, a small European island nation in the Mediterranean, but despite its small size, it is divided. It has been divided for decades between its ethnic Greek community, um, of, of which George is a part, and an ethnic Turk community. And the two sides don't talk to each other. They don't do business together. They don't travel back and forth. There's a complete breakdown of trust. And so George has helped to launch another youth-led network that aims to bridge that divide between the Greek and Turkish elements of his country by enhancing transparency, because we all know that transparency is the key building block for trust. And so if George succeeds, he will succeed in breaking down the divides that separate his country. George. Thanks, Ken. Hi, everyone. I have a problem. I don't like others deciding for my future. Challenge accepted. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm, here, I'm here to talk. I, I believe in empowering people. And I'm here to talk to you about a project I started to give voice to young people about the political situation in my country, Cyprus. Firstly, let me tell you a few words about the situation on the island. Cyprus is a small island in the Mediterranean Sea, and in the past, Greek Cypriots and Turkish Cypriots were living together in peace. For a number of reasons, in 1974, Turkey invaded the island and split it in the middle. After the war, Greek Cypriots moved to one part of the island, and Turkish Cypriots moved to the other part. The Turkish Cypriots tried to declare their part as a new country, but this is not recognized by the United Nations as the invasion was illegal. So, for the last 40 years, the leaders of the two communities had ongoing negotiations on how the two communities should again live together. But these have been fruitless. The problem is that there is complete lack of transparency for these negotiations, as every time four or five politicians from each side convene in a room behind closed doors. The public never finds out what has been discussed there and what are the major disagreements between the two communities. You want to know the result? In 2004, there was a referendum with a proposed solution on how the two communities should settle their differences and live together on the same land in peace. But it got rejected by 75% of the Greek Cypriot community. Why? Because the people whose future depended on this referendum were always kept in the dark and were never involved in the process. If you think that the government is like a business, where the customers are now the voters, it is clear that transparent government affairs will increase people's trust and cultivate a feeling of involvement. But for the case of the Cyprus issue, the government affairs were anything but transparent. People were feeling neglected and confused throughout the entire process and we are only asked at the very end to buy, or if you want, to vote, a ready product that in many cases did not match their needs. This was frustrating, and we had to do something about it. So last summer, me and a bunch of friends were discussing what we could do to address our country's most important problem. We are engineers and scientists, and we love solving problems. So what if we try to solve the biggest challenge of all? Like us? There are hundreds of young people in Cyprus that are smart and full of ideas. So the idea of 
thecypressproblem.com was born, an online social platform that will promote transparency in the negotiations and voice young people regarding the Cyprus issue. New emerging technologies and the power of the internet and social media can change dramatically the dynamics of the ongoing efforts and provide fresh perspectives on the problem from both sides of the physical borders. We are trying to make the negotiations fully transparent and encourage people's involvement by taking the topics being discussed, breaking them down into simple terms, and try, um, sorry, trying to, to foster creative discussions that yield solutions. The proposed solutions are then voted up or down, and the most popular ones are drafted into a formal letter that is sent to the decision makers to be considered. In only a few months, we had over 500 young thinkers and on the platform with over 100 proposals. Some of these proposals were realistic, suggesting compromises for settling out the differences, while some others were very emotional with no compromises at all. What we noticed throughout the process is that the most popular proposals amongst our platform's demographic were the compromising ones, demonstrating that many people wish for the two communities to live together again, even if the results of the referendum might suggest a different picture. The problems being discussed are not trivial. Just to give you an example, one of the discussions is about refugees and their right to return to their homes. However, there are humanitarian issues involved. As in their original houses, a new family has been living there for the last 40 years, and for them, it's also their home. There is no black and white solution, but from the discussions and the proposals on the platform, it's emerging that financial compensations could be an acceptable middle ground. Our platform has demonstrated that being fully transparent and objective for the thorny issues is something appreciated by the public and helps them have more realistic views without feeling misinformed and helpless. With this project, we are proving that young people are here and are fighting for their future, even if 40 years have passed. If you want to do the same for your country, I, I would say there are three key steps. Firstly, think of the biggest challenge your country is facing and trying to solve that. Do not go for anything less. Secondly, surround yourself with great people to help you out. Thinking big and having a great vision will help you attract the best people. Thirdly, agree with yourself how many years you want to be committed to this project. Stick to that and never give up. Thank you for your attention and for not letting the world change you.